Alright guys, today we are here with the highly anticipated 2021 Isuzu MUX. Now, we've just completed a, about a thousand kilometer uh, trip over the last couple of days, which included uh, three days on Fraser Island, testing this car out off-road um, and seeing what it was capable of in a number of different terrains on the island, uh, as well as then seeing what the drive um, for a you know, six to seven hour drive to get there and back, what that was gonna be like on fuel consumption and also comfort. So one of the good things with the 2021 MUX is that it actually gets an increase in power. So it goes to 140 kilowatts and, 100, and 450 newton meters of torque. This is an increase of 10 kilowatts and 20 newton meters respectively. Um, from an engine perspective, it performs really, really well off-road. We didn't find any areas where it needed that little bit of extra power. Um, of course, extra power is always welcome, but one thing to bear in mind compared to a lot of its competitors that claim higher output figures, um, this actually weighs less than those competitors. So you're sitting at anywhere from about 400 to 500 kilos less in weight than its competitors with higher power outputs. So naturally you're not gonna need that um, extra power to, to kind of do the same uh, tracks and everything like that. So you shouldn't notice too much of a difference there. Now in terms of the system, it uses a DPD or a diesel particulate diffuser rather than the diesel particulate filter or DPF. Um, we will chuck something on the website that gives you a bit of an idea of the differences between the two systems and the benefits of each. That's one advantage with this if you're looking at it from off-road touring perspective or even just long-term touring while having heavy city use. Uh, from an engine uh, space kind of um, perspective, those of you that may want to be using this for touring, putting second batteries in, all that kind of stuff, this is a little bit tight under the bonnet like most of its competitors. Um, so with the exception of something like the Fortuna, you're probably going to struggle in most models to have um, space for second batteries, um, pre-filters, all of that kind of stuff. So that's one just to bear in mind and to check and make sure things are going to fit uh, before you go. However, I would highly recommend the MUX as an option for you to start and then work around um, the limitations uh, if any. Uh, but for 99% of customers out there that are going to use this car and go to their local Isuzu dealership to buy one, um, I don't think you'll have any issues with this car. So the model that we're reviewing today is the LST. Now this is the range topping model. Uh, it also has some of the most luxurious features in it, but it's still highly capable off-road and comes with a couple of different considerations based on the user that's likely to use this car. Um, so parking sensors are standard. So you have the corner ones on both sides, then you have the central ones in the grille itself. You have this big prominent grille. Um, it's no mistaking that this is an MUX. Isuzu then went for the traditional lettering on the top rather than trying to put a you know kind of fancy short and condensed logo um, and we have these really aggressive streamlined headlights as well versus the old kind of teardrop looking um, headlights in the previous model MUX. Down the bottom fog lights are standard and then you get as you can see here some pretty good departure and approach angles uh, from the new styling of the MUX. Um, as well as some pretty generous ground clearance as well. So you go to about 235 um, millimeters of ground clearance. It's also interesting to note that Isuzu actually calculate that from the lowest point on the car down to the ground. Some other manufacturers we've actually recently found out are doing this from the floor plan down to the ground, which can throw out some of that um, ground clearance if you are comparing against some of its competitors. Um, so looking at it from the distance and the side, we found this car was really, really good for probably up to some intermediate off-road tracks. Um, anything kind of taking you more towards the heavy uh, off-road tracks, which not many customers are gonna um, take their cars in, into this scenario, um, should actually be able to tackle most tracks in Australia with it. Now let's go around to the side and let's show you the inside of the car. All right, one of the cool things with the MUX is that it actually does have remote engine start. Now this is super handy in summer if you wanna get your car cool, in winter if you wanna heat it up. So all you do is press the lock button and then you push and hold on the engine start button and it will start the engine. If you need to turn it off, same function again, or as you come up to the car, you can press unlock and get in. Now the interesting thing to note with this is it actually turns off the engine the minute that you press unlock, um, not even when you've opened the door. So 
a little bit of a difference in operation versus some other manufacturers, but still does the job in getting the car cool before you chuck your kids in or before you get in there to go on to your next adventure. As we step inside into the, into the MUX LST model, um, we get this beautiful door trimming, um, so you get some white stitching highlights with this premium material on the side that is soft touch, especially on the armrest. The top here is a little bit more of a harder plastic, but it's not quite as harsh as some of its competitors. All your window controls are in the exact same places that you'd expect. The cool thing is, is this does have electronic open and fold seat um, mirrors. And what this will allow you to do is on bush tracks and everything like that, you'll be able to fold the mirrors in if you're going through a little bit of a tighter spot. Um, now one of the great features that the MUX has compared to some of its competitors in all the models is that you can actually adjust the steering wheel up and down but also backwards and forwards. Um, so the tilt and reach adjustment makes it super easy regardless of your driving position um, to actually find that perfect um, sweet spot for your drive. It has electronic adjustment for your seats, so going backwards and forwards on both sides um, as well as up and down and the backrest, all electronic on the LST model. You get this nice analog mix with digital display on the center will provide door open tire pressure systems everything like that will all be through there as well as your range and distance to go and then coming through to the middle section you're getting your uh, apple carplay your android auto these are wireless you do also have the usb inputs as well should you want to use the, the usb um, so that you can charge your phone at the same time dual zone climate control is standard air conditioning in the rear is standard you also have parking sensors front and rear, which we touched on before. Downhill assist control in the four-wheel drive models is standard, so it will assist you in some of those steeper de declines, um, as well as then having um, your rear diff lock as well on the MUX models, which is super handy tackling some of that harder off-road terrain. Standard um, sunglass holder at the top, um, and that's basically it for the dash. The hazard light is um, switches at the top, and you can see that it has this really nice premium kind of feel to the dash. It carries across that white stitching that the seats and the doors have. Um, and it is a soft touch material, which is really nice to see. As we get into the back of the MUX, you have got plenty of leg room. So the front seat is actually set in my driving position. I'm five foot 10, um, but I like to have the seat back quite a bit. So as you can see, my knees aren't touching. I still have plenty of room to move around. Pretty comfortable. Foot space underneath the seat is all right. Um, it is a little bit tight width-wise, which you expect in these mid-size SUVs. Um, so you wouldn't have three of me, but you might have two car seats or one car seat and, and you know, a, another child. Um, or you could still have a couple of mates in there. Um, they may just be a little bit more cramped if you have some larger friends that look more like myself. Um, in the rear, one of the cool things I've done as well is to have this little handy shopping bag and bag hook. So if you go shopping and you don't want, you know, that bag to roll around or just even a handbag, you can chuck that in there, it's pretty convenient to have that so it's not loose and rolling around. Some pockets here behind the door, uh, behind the seats on both seats. USB fast charging ports are two in the middle, plus a little kind of nook and cranny to chuck the device in while it's charging. Um, air conditioning vents at the top all along here. You can control your air conditioning directly above you here as well as a passenger. And coming to the doors, you have these nice grab handles that are pretty solid. So if you're off-road and have your mates running you around or, or whatever, um, definitely a, uh, lots of places to grab um, everything to, to make sure that you're uh, not being thrown around too much. Um, now let's have a look in the third row and, and show you how that looks in the back. So you might be wondering, being in a mid-size SUV, what is the seating like if you have to use all three rows? Now, I am actually really comfortable in the back. I can't say the same for two of its four competitors that I can think of off the top of my head. Um, where I can't even sit without crouching down because the roof is too low or without having my knees touch the back of the seat. So I'm right now in a position that I would probably be in while driving on a longer drive. I'm able to move my knees pretty freely. I'm not hitting the roof of the car. So like I've still got a little bit of distance between my head and the roof. I'm at five foot 10, as I said before. Um, so while I'm not overly tall, I'm also not overly short. Um, so if you've got kids in the back or you've just got friends or family that need to sit in the back on a, on a shorter drive or even a longer drive, I reckon you could pull it off pretty comfortably in the MUX. This is actually the first time I've sat in the third row of an MUX um, in a long time and I'm actually really, really impressed. So if you are planning to use that third row, highly recommend you get into the MUX and have a drive, get into the back, see how comfortable you'd be um, because it really stands out compared to a lot of its competitors. So. 
hats off to MUX for that one. Um, Isofix seats, however, for, the, for your baby seats are only for the front two, um, sorry, the middle row, but the two outer seats. Um, however, you do have the three anchor points or tether points for the baby seats across all three of the middle row. You don't, you don't get them for the third row like some other four-wheel drives do. So, not necessarily a bad thing if you're in this kind of segment and market, you're probably only going to need one or two baby seats anyways. Okay, so the LST that we're reviewing today does come with the tow bar, however, it's important to note that this is an optional extra that um, you need to order from your dealership or um, after you buy the car. The towing capacity of the MUX is really good at three and a half ton, um, and it has a 350 kilo tow bar down weight, which is really, really good. The one limiting factor, however, is the GCM, which means that for roughly a 5,950 kilo GCM, um, which is your combined trailer mass and vehicle mass, uh, you will actually be limited to about 220, 230 kilos of, of actual payload um, based on the curb weight of this car and all, a full three and a half ton load minus the 350 kilo um, down weight. Now, if you're adding a bull bar, if you're adding you know roof racks, full tank of fuel, people in it, whatever, that's gonna have some slight variations in that remaining payload figure. Um, so it might be worthwhile kind of expecting to tow a little bit less than that, um, or just making sure that your calculations are really spot on as more and more insurance companies get down to the, um, to ensuring that if they're paying out for a claim, that you have actually used this correctly. One of the handy things with the MUX is that it does come with a 12 volt power output in the back. Now we had a fridge powering our um, cold stuff the whole weekend. Uh, while it only powers while the car's running, obviously when you keep your fridge cold, you're not losing that much temperature out. So if for overnight, you're doing pretty good. And during the day, obviously you're getting in and out of the car, car's running, car's off, you should be fine. Um, so it's a really handy inclusion. However, obviously if you do want to power your fridge 24 seven, definitely invest in a, um, a dual battery system or maybe even just get a portable power um, battery box as well. Um, it does have plenty of little tie down hooks as well which we found really handy as well so if you want to tie down things like a fridge or any other kind of bigger um, item that you're putting in the back of the car you're going to have plenty of areas to latch these down throughout the whole rear of the car going through to the front. But there you have it guys that's what I think of the MUX in the 2021 model like we said, this has been the LST. If we can get our hands on some of the lower model uh, variants, we will definitely do a review on those and come back to you with some information there. Uh, would we re recommend you have a look at this car? Simple answer is yes. I actually really enjoyed it. It is a ute-based four-wheel drive um, as a family SUV. Um, like many of its other competitors you know, out there, there are some compromises in that. Um, however, for an 99% of the people that are most likely going to be driving this car um, this is going to do a really really good job not only at towing but at just driving on road um, driving off-road on family holidays camping road trips all of that kind of stuff plenty of space you can, and like we said really impressed with that third row um, and how much space I actually had in the back there so definitely go down to one of your local Isuzu dealers see if you can take one for a test drive if you're considering one uh, if you have any questions and you can't get to it, one of your dealers or you just want to ask us, as always, leave you know any kind of questions or comments down in the comment section. And don't forget to subscribe so we can keep bringing some really good videos like this for you um, going into the future with plenty of new models that come onto the market. Um, if there's anywhere that you'd like us to um, take these cars, also leave a comment down in the comment section and we'll add that to the consideration list.